स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया ट्रेडिशन 
and historically they have been connected to the movement called Romanticism. In fact, in a uh, letter written by De La Croix, uh, he writes that I have undertaken a modern subject, a barricade, so that if I did not win for my country, I will at least be painful for it. So you see, for the first time, an artist is using the term modern to describe the nature of the subject matter of work. But then what is Romanticism? And what were the objectives of this art movement which took place in the mid 19th century? Now, generally speaking, Romanticism uh, kind of unfolded itself at the dawn of the 19th century when the struggle to impose a new democratic, political, and social order was in the process. People grew anxious in response to ongoing political turmoil and uncertainty. So clearly, there was a political context, a social context. Now, if you look at the art produced um, under this ideology called romanticism, mostly paintings, they seem to be characterized by these following points. Number one, imagination. Most of the romantic painters emphasized imagination over reason. And in that sense, this uh, overemphasis on the element of imagination seems to be a backlash against the rationalism characterized by the preceding period called New Classical Period. Second, the intuition. Art not only tried to evoke emotion, but the painters also followed their own intuitive feeling, intuitive drive very sincerely. And thirdly, inspiration. The romantic artist was an inspired creator rather than a technical master. So following this logic, this is very clear that from romanticism, art movement onwards, most of the painters are clearly giving more emphasis and more importance to this inspiration emotion, rather than the mere technical skill. So what this means is going with the moment or being spontaneous rather than getting it precise. So if you go back to that painting by Goya, in spite of the fact that Goya was a very skilled painter, academically trained painter, in this painting, he is not so much bothered about the accuracy of the form, or the clarity of the color, or the neatness of the composition, because in this painting and many other paintings done by him, he was more concerned with the evocative power of the painting. He was more interested to achieve the expression to his painting rather than accuracy of anatomy, proportion, perspective, and all these things. And, of course, Romanticism gives birth to, once again, after the Renaissance period, individuality. So, Romanticism is an idea that was certainly shared by many artists and painters of that time, but at the same time, it celebrated the individual. In fact, governments and movements should not sacrifice the individual, but it should raise him or her. That was the idea shared by many of these people, artists, painters, poets. Now, one of the very, very important uh, painters from this romantic movement was Turner. And certainly Turner emerged as not only England's most dramatic romantic painter, but of the entire year. For him, the depiction of light and atmosphere was the most important part of the painting. He portrayed nature at its most violent situation. This is interesting because in the preceding era, in the, in the previous period, we have seen that painters mostly looked at nature as something 
through which they could show the serene quality of nature, the peaceful quality of nature, the tranquility of nature. But when you look at Turner's paintings, it is something absolutely different. There is hardly any serenity. You forget about peaceful quality in his paintings. And in order to achieve that, he is kind of giving up any approach to any attitude to going for precise details. But he is rather using very loose and violent brushworks, applying bright colors, and also he is not bothered about sharp contour lines and all that. Hence, when you look at his paintings, for example this one, what you see is a painting or an image which is, to use a more contemporary term, out of focus. This is because he is not bothered about precise contour lines. He is more interested in the overall visual effect of the scene that he is depicting. Now look at this one. This particular painting called The Fighting Cameroon is also uh, about uh, a situation where uh, you see fire, you see a violent and a restless sky, and you see shapes, you see elements which are not static at all. In fact, this particular painting, very famous painting, painted in 1844 and called Rain, Steam and Speed, is a classic example of Turner's art, what Turner stood for. In fact, a classical painter of the preceding period in the Western art history would have outrightly rejected this kind of painting. But in this case, for us, it is an absolutely fantastic work because this so-called visual ambiguity, this visual co confusion, if I may use this term, is what we enjoy, what we admire. Instead of going for precision, Turner is going for visual effect. And in order to achieve that, Turner is using absolutely unique uh, kind of brushwork, technical application, which uh, was hither to unseen. Nobody had done that before. Hence, Turner happens to be an eye opener in the history of modern art. He is a kind of pioneer in liberating the painterly skills from the conventional rules and regulations. In fact, he is also painting subject matters uh, which are also not very peaceful, not very calm. He is deliberately and selectively going for subject matters which are violent. So this also goes to show how his mind must have been working in terms of not only painting uh, or painting technique, but also, also in terms of subject matters that he is choosing. Now look at this comparison between one new classical painting by David and a romantic painting by Turner. Clearly, the new classical painting reveals all kinds of concerns with precision, accuracy, and a clarity of all distance, perspective, clear school, life and shape. Whereas, look at Turner's paintings. He simply rejects all these classical and academic norms and innovates a new method of painting, a new approach to painting altogether. Now, Caspar David Frederick should be considered as another very important painter from the Romantic movement, though he was not from England, he was from Germany, and he contributed a lot to the development of the Romantic art movement. In Caspar David's uh, Frederick's painting, you may not find the kind of violent brushstrokes and surface treatment you see in Turner's paintings. Maybe comparatively, Casper David Frederick's paintings have a lot of clarity. Yet, if you look at his paintings uh, very carefully, you will feel a sense of loss, a sense of uh, 
history and also um, repeatedly throughout his career, Casper David in his paintings tried to express the formidable presence of nature and how a human being who is absolutely insignificant, powerless, and helpless in front of that formidable nature. So, nature not necessarily in terms of its violent uh, character, but nature as it is may also appear to be something that is immensely powerful and therefore formidable for human beings to negotiate. So, this is what Caspar David Frederick, as uh, a romantic painter, continuously uh, has been exploring in his painting. So, the common romantic elements would be no hint of idealization in depicting the different attributes of nature, individualistic approach, personal interpretation in execution and thought process, of course, continuous expressions in rebellion against the existing conventions. They are very, very clear, most of the romantic things, that they are not going to follow the conventional rules, rather they would create their own rules. In that sense, these romantic painters were very, very innovative. And an excitement that they felt from the different scenes of the countryside and the various phenomena of the nature had constantly been the inspiring element and that formed the chief subject for painting in the landscapes of these painters. So, it was not necessary for the romantic painters to look for a subject that has to be something grand, something, something that already has some mythological, historical uh, bearing. They could choose any subject matter for that matter, any piece of nature, any corner of, of nature, and can can work on that to create a sensation that they might have felt. So, to, to focus on subjects and scenes which are apparently very commonplace, but once they get painted by very innovative painters, even a very commonplace subject matter can achieve or exude a uh, dignity that was hitherto unknown. This is what romantic or the artworks done during the romantic movement show. And this is what we shall find happening in the following art movement that is realism. The same thing will be happening over there too. Another mm, very well known painter from the Romantic movement who hailed from England was John Constable. So, John Constable's paintings are relatively calm compared to Turner or even Casper David Frederick. There is a quality of serenity, but his contribution to the genre of landscape painting was to or rather not to wait for some grand event to happen in nature, anything from nature in this landscape around the village he lived could be a subject matter. The Romanticism was followed by the next significant art movement called Realism. Realism attempts to create a truthful and accurate depiction of the models that nature and contemporary life offer to the artist. So, there is this element of reality there, but unlike the previous classical reality, which was based on a preconceived model, in this art movement of mid 19th century called realism, artists are looking at how a particular figure or object appears right now. So, the artificiality of both the classicism and romanticism in the academic art was unanimously rejected by the realist painters. New idea was that ordinary people and everybody, everyday activities are worthy subjects for art. This is also very interesting. 
anything, anybody, any common person, any ordinary person could be a subject matter for your life. Artists, the realists, attempted to portray the life, appearances, the problems, the customs, the social situation, and most of the middle and lower classes of the unexceptional, unassuming, the ordinary, the humble, the unacclimated. And this is what we will see happening in the paintings done by very famous painters of the realist movement, the realism movement called Gustav Kurbein, or Bide, and others. For example, look at this painting by Kurbein called The Stone Breakers. Who are these two people? They are um, hard working people and um, they don't have any social dignity in the traditional and classical hierarchy of the society, yet for Urbe, they are the ideal subject matters for a painting. In essence, by doing some paintings based on the life of the people coming from the hard working the society where, where they are, uh, in a sense, exploited to a great extent, he is, Kurbe is definitely glorifying not the way they live, but their self-dignity. Miller, look at this painting by Miller called The Gleaners. Three women gleaning crops after the harvest. This is such a commonplace and ordinary subject matter that throughout the history of art, until Miller painted this, this kind of subject matter has always been overlooked. But Miller does it. He doesn't go away. So he picks it up and makes it uh, uh, makes a fantastic painting out of the subject matter. Again, in this case, uh, this particular painting by Miller, or if you look at the previous painting by Kurbin, both these paintings, the individual figures remain rather mm, anonymous. Because perhaps here individual persons are not uh, what Millet or Kurbe were concerned about. They were perhaps more concerned with the social identity, the class identity of these people. Another painter from the same time and belonging to the same movement called Dormio was also doing paintings like this, the third class carrier. Third class carrier where people, the travelers, they come from the lowest uh, class of the society and they are the most hardworking and economically deprived class and they become the subject matter for these artists like Dormio. In fact, Daniel goes to the extent of doing a piece of drawing in lithograph uh, about a person who is not only poor or deprived, but completely derelict, could be a drunk, could be somebody um, who doesn't have any place, any dignity, any respect in the society. And these kind of people become the subject matters for them. In fact, look at this wonderful uh, sketch by Kurbe, where he draws a young lad uh, in a sleeping posture. I mean, apart from the fact that this is a very accurate and perfect drawing, what one sees and can respond by looking at this work is the impact, the feeling, how Kurbe is able to not only see the structure and form of the boy, but how Kurbe is also able to feel the existence of the boy, feel that moment of the boy when he is uh, sleeping with his hands, get an open book. A very interesting drawing. And then again, Kurbe does this wonderful oil on canvas. Subject is again 
very strange if you look at it from the point of view of the classical art or the tradition of Western art. It is a, the title is The Wounded Man, and the uh, subject of the film is exactly that. A man who is blind, and he is wounded, he can also see a black spot on his face. Not that he was somebody very famous or a very well known soldier or somebody like that. Could be a very ordinary person. But right now he is wounded and could be his impact towards him and he makes a big too. So, in other words, when you look at the various examples of paintings done by Mille or Kurube or Dobby or anybody else from the Nautic book and realism movement, you see that, that uh, like uh, what you see here once again, that individual facial features uh, is something that is absent here. You don't get to actually very clearly see how these people look like. But you can very clearly see the, and feel and get some information about the social class these people belong to. So this is very interesting that repeatedly, in spite of their ability, the painter's ability to depict all the details accurately, the painters are making certain selections that, as far as school day and media are concerned, in most of their paintings, they are not showing the faces of these people very clearly, but they are showing the identity of these people without any ambiguity. So the figures, in terms of the drawing, the color, and the tonality, they actually are very simple and plain. The figures are firmly modeled with some dignity, and they are simply emphasized in terms of a strong and solid build. And the figures assume a dignity more natural and more convincing. Because if you look at their gesture, posture, the way they are walking, talking, or sitting, or working, like the one that we have seen in the first image where Kurt Bay does a painting on the stone breakers. They are so engaged with their work, they are engaged with their life, that these characters in the painting are hardly aware of the presence of the painter. These are not posed figures or figures with very specific postures. They are there in their own life and here is the painter who is painting. 